Do you see that? <laughs> That's so satisfying. Like that is so satisfying and maybe so gross, but so satisfying. Dermaplaning is a skin and beauty treatment that has grown a lot in popularity, especially over the past year. So I have lots of Instagram followers and patients asking me if dermaplaning is right for them. I'm going to tell you a lot more about it so that you can decide if it's the right treatment for you. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis, and I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find skincare products that work for you. First of all, what is dermaplaning? I feel like people use this term sort of broadly to refer to two different procedures or two different techniques. You have the technique that's performed at home, usually with a facial razor and really targets shaving the face. I'll call that shaving in this video. And then you have the procedure that's performed typically in a medical office with a scalpel or a sterile blade. And that's really what I'll call dermaplaning in this video. Both techniques exfoliate the skin as well as remove vellus hairs, also known as peach fuzz, as well as unwanted thicker hairs from the face. However, oftentimes the professional treatments that are done in office, what I would consider to be true dermaplaning, can go a little bit deeper and remove a little bit more of that top layer of dead skin cells. The benefits of these treatments are that it removes unwanted facial hair, including those little baby fuzzies, it also just makes your skin so smooth, like baby butt soft. It makes your makeup go on better. And lastly, because you are exfoliating off some of those top layers of dead skin cells, it can just make your complexion look a lot brighter. So let's first talk about the professional in-office treatment of dermaplaning. Like I mentioned before, this is done with a sterile surgical blade. It varies based on state who's allowed to perform these procedures. Oftentimes in a medical office, the medical esthetician will be the person performing the procedure, but in other states, only nurses or doctors are permitted to perform this treatment. When patients ask me if I recommend dermaplaning, I sort of have to explain that it falls, in my mind at least, in the same category as massage, where for some people it's going to be truly therapeutic. They're gonna do it and they're like never going to not want to do it again because they are so excited with the results. They love the way it makes them look and feel. That being said, could you get away with never doing dermaplaning and still have beautiful, glowing, well exfoliated skin Absolutely, so it's totally a personal preference, but it's definitely a nice treat. Dermaplaning is appropriate for most skin types. I would say the main exception to this is if you have compromised skin. So if you have an infection, an open wound, a sunburn, active acne, a rosacea flare, those would all be reasons to avoid a dermaplaning treatment because there's a much higher risk of infection and complication. But really the person performing the procedure should be able to advise you whether or not you're a good candidate. For people who are getting regular dermaplaning treatments, I would say they typically do it every four to six weeks, so monthly, essentially because that's how long it takes you to accumulate that dead skin cell layer on the skin surface that you wanna be exfoliating, and it's about how long it takes those little peach fuzz hairs on your face to grow back, and at that point you probably want them off again. One thing I do wanna address is the claims that people make about dermaplaning, like it stimulates collagen, or it helps your products absorb better, or it reduces fine lines and wrinkles, or it treats acne. I mean, maybe we just don't have the clinical data to support that. So when I'm talking about dermaplaning with a patient or an Instagram follower, I never really tell them that that is a guarantee because it's not, but I do recognize that there are some amazing benefits to dermaplaning. I just don't make any claims that haven't been founded in clinical data. I know that in-office dermaplaning treatments are not going to be feasible for everyone. So let's talk a little bit about what you can do at home. I would more refer to this as face shaving, but if you get the technique down really well, you're probably getting some dermaplaning benefits as well. The tool most people use at home to do this is an eyebrow razor. This is a very cost-effective method, but if you're a little bit more advanced or wanna invest a little bit more, there are tools like the Dermaflash, which combines sonic vibration as well as a razor, just to give you a little bit more of an advanced experience. One thing to note is that this technique is not done with multi-blade razors, the kind you would see for shaving your legs or what men with beards would typically use to shave their face. And the reason for that is the people who are performing dermaplaning or at-home face shaving with this technique are generally targeting very fine hairs 
or very gentle, superficial skin exfoliation. So a multi-blade razor is really overkill and just risks adding additional irritation without much treatment benefit. Obviously, whether or not you're a good candidate for this procedure is really going to vary, but I love shaving my face. I think it makes my makeup go on so much better. I feel like my products just look better on my skin. I also feel like come summer and like your face catches the light perfectly and you don't see all of those peach fuzz hairs. It's worth it just for that. And I have walked many a friend through how to shave their face properly and what to do because I feel like everyone should know how to do this if they want to. Similarly to in-office dermaplaning, people who are not a good candidate for this are generally people who have active acne, flaring rosacea, markedly sensitive skin, or any type of compromised skin. So some tips for doing this right. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to start with a clean, fresh blade every time. Luckily, those eyebrow razors are really cheap and very disposable, so it's fine to use a new one every time. I use a surgical blade at home, but that's because I have lots of experience with them and I know how to not cut myself with something that's incredibly sharp. There's also this tool by Verst. It's their like new dermaplaning tool and each one of these blades lasts four sessions. I recently just tried this and I think it's really good. It's a nice long blade and the tip is guarded so you're a lot less likely to cut yourself. Before you start, you wanna make sure your skin is prepped appropriately. So you need to have clean skin. Some people will just wash their face. I will wash my face and then either go in with an AHA BHA toning pad to both clean off any residual residue as well as sort of dry my face out. Or more often I use just an alcohol pad to clean my face off. And I'm sure some of you are like, oh my gosh, alcohol pad on your face. Like you have rosacea, are you crazy? But I don't notice any rosacea flares when I do that. If your skin is different and the thought of putting alcohol on your face just like makes you quiver, just don't do it. So your skin is clean. It's completely dry. You're ready to get started. You have your blade. The way you would do this is you wanna hold the blade at a 45 degree angle. I'm not gonna actually do it. <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. Hold your skin incredibly taut. That's really important. You don't wanna shave on lax skin. And then you're going to make very short feathery strokes down your face. You don't wanna shave up against the direction of hair growth. Some dermaplaning places will do that, but when you're doing it at home, it's better to shave with the direction of hair growth, which is downward. When you're doing this, you should not have to press hard on the skin at all to get those little peach fuzz hairs to come off, okay? So if you're really pressing on the skin, you're probably putting a little too much pressure on the blade and you're gonna cause irritation. I much prefer to do this treatment in the evening so that I don't have to layer on a ton of skincare afterward, like sunscreen and makeup and things like that because you have this like fresh baby skin and I just wanna like nurture it. I do think though it is a nice time to put on an active ingredient like glycolic acid or salicylic acid or a mandelic acid because your skin is so ready to receive those ingredients. If it's not too irritating for you, it's an awesome time to do it. Probably my favorite post shave thing to use are the Alpha Ret exfoliating pads by Skin Better. This is kind of like a combination pad that has sort of their proprietary blend of retinoids and alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. But I love it because it, it definitely stings. Like, it stings, um, but it prevents me from getting any little tiny like breakouts afterward. If that's too intense for you, another product I really like is the Maylove Night Renewer Glycolic Acid Cream. This is a little bit less intense, but you still get that exfoliation with the glycolic acid on that fresh baby skin. And if you're really sensitive, but you still want a little bit of exfoliation, this is one of my favorite products. This is the Mandelic Pigmentation Corrector Night Serum by Allies of Skin. This stuff is good. And if you have sensitive skin, it's such a beautiful light exfoliant. After I've applied my actives, I will follow that up with a moisturizer and then just go to sleep. One thing that's really important is that, well, you should always be wearing sunscreen, but especially in the days following a dermaplaning session or shaving, you should absolutely be diligent with your sunscreen and sunscreen reapplication because you've removed some of those top layers of dead skin cells, which provide you a little bit of extra UV protection. So you don't wanna do all of this goodness to your skin only to leave it vulnerable to UV radiation. Before I wrap up this video, I have to answer the question that I know I'm going to get because my patients and Instagram followers ask me this all the time when I talk about face shaving and dermaplaning, which is if I shave my face or if I dermaplane, will my hair grow back thicker? No, 
Otherwise, balding men would just be shaving their heads like crazy. The stimulus for hair growth happens deep in the hair root, nowhere near the hair end or surface. So when you're shaving, your hair has no clue what's going on. It is not growing back thicker. It can sometimes appear thicker because when you're shaving the hair at the skin surface, that's at the thickest part of the hair and hairs often taper towards the end. So it can give the illusion of thicker hair, but are you actually growing newer, thicker hair because you shaved or dermaplaned? Absolutely not. That is like one of the biggest myths out there and every dermatologist needs that myth to die. Have you tried dermaplaning? Let me know. I want to hear all about it. And especially if you do it at home, I would love to know what tools you use and if you like them. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram at Dr. Samantha Ellis, and I'll see you next time.